What made you stick with being a gynecologist? Male versions. Story 1. Originally I didn't know what I wanted to do when I entered medical school and if you had asked me Obgin was at the bottom of the list based off of everything negative I had heard. The third year rotation was really surprising at how much I enjoyed it. You get to do a little of everything, medicine, surgery, primary care, office procedures and obviously delivering babies which was awesome. On top of that I lost my mother during medical school, who was my biggest role model. Being able to be there in the room with new moms during their happiest moments just kinda made it all click for me. Don't regret my decision at all. Story 2. Male OB or Gin here. Lots of reasons. I am genuinely excited every time I get to be part of bringing a child into the world. As a dad to daughters, I feel responsible for making the world a safer place for women to seek health care. Women's health is full of mystery, which isn't the case in more studied clinical areas. Some reasons for this include women's health only getting about 1% of biopharma research funding, women being excluded from clinical trials until 1993 thank you thalidomide scandal and research animal models almost exclusively being male until 2016. There are common women's health problems, like endometriosis 10 of women, which we simply do not yet understand. As an academic, I love the research component of my job. The list goes on and on. In short, I think it's the most rewarding area of medicine and wouldn't do anything else. I have received too many comments to be able to reply individually. However, I just wanted to say that all of your positive messages made me proud to do what I do. Thank you for the awards and love. Story 3. Male OB or Gin in my 30 seconds from Europe here. Several reasons, but maybe the most important and formative experience for me was when after med school I was living in the Horn of Africa for a couple of years. I witnessed some soul-crushing things, like obstetric fistula young women with advanced cervical cancer that could have been prevented easily, victims of sexual <coughs> violence, complicated and traumatic deliveries. To put it mildly, women's health leaves much to be desired in a global context. I also met some extremely inspiring and charismatic people like Edna Aiden Ismail and Catherine Hamlin. In general, I'm usually not very easily captivated by people, but these women were just something else with their endless kindness, charisma and altruism. If on my deathbed I could say that I spent my life trying to do what they did, I could die peacefully. So when I, as a young doctor, had the opportunity to get training in the most important medical specialty of all and do my small part in making the world a kinder place for women, I mean, who really would need to think twice. Since the thing about obstetric fistula caught some attention, I'm just using this visibility to say that if you want to support the work these people helping women suffering from obstetric fistula do, you can donate directly to the Hamlin Fistula Hospital in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. The work they do is truly amazing. Story 4. I'm a male gynecologist of six years. Albright worked in a hospital outside the US. During our education we do rotations on every field and gynecology was one of the most diversified fields. I'll do deliveries, small operations D and C or laparoscopic surgery as well as bigger stuff. Here we even do breast surgery and administer adjuvant chemotherapy ourselves. So I get to do all the fun stuff and it never gets boring. Sorry to everyone thinking I'm looking at vulvas 24 7 Most of what I do is talking to be honest. If you have more questions, I'll do my best to answer. Gotta bring my daughter to bed now. Story 5. Seems like most of the comments are just people who know someone. Actual male OB or gin here for almost 20 years now. Live my job. Hours suck sometimes, but I'm doing something I enjoy. Get to do primary care. Get to do surgery. My first revelation in med school was that a lot of fields have a few things that are the bulk of their time, basically their bread and butter. Primary care? Lots of diabetes and high blood pressure. General surgery? Bowel resections and gallbladders. And? Tubes and tonsils. Loved cardiology, but couldn't stand the thought of doing three years of internal medicine or pediatrics to get to the point. But in OB or GIN, every day is different. Surgery, office, labor and delivery. Most of my patients want to be there because something is happening that they wanted, not have to be there because something is wrong with them. We help many people on some of the best days of their lives, but also help them through some of the worst. And my work is constantly under attack at this point. I'm in a red state, and I know people are leaving, but I stay behind because my patients can't leave and I can't abandon them.
and if I can use my privilege as a middle-aged cis-het white male to get someone to listen to the impact of their decisions on my patients, I'm happy to do what I can. Story 6. It felt like an extremely well-rounded profession. You get to do inpatient and outpatient. You get to do office procedures, laparoscopic surgery, robotic surgery, vaginal surgery, and open surgery. You get to do hands-on ultrasound and not just read it. You get to deliver babies. If you're doing GIN OSE, many will do the chemo and the surgery and not just the surgery like SERG OSE. If you do MFEM, you get to do ultrasound-guided procedures such as fetal blood transfusions and such. I feel like this thread wants to focus on the discrepancy between physician and patient gender. We are physicians who take care of patients regardless of their demographics or characteristics, and the profession itself can have high acuity, high points and low points. You are caring for vulnerable populations, and it is rewarding. The other question we always get is, don't female patients prefer a female physician? Many do, and that is great. I want patients to see whomever they feel comfortable seeing. I ultimately find that for 99% of patients, they want someone who is going to take care of them as a compassionate and empathetic physician, and this transcends what the race gender of their physician is. Story 7. I played football in college. Offensive line. Burly bearded, white dude. Everyone had me shoehorned for orthopedic surgery or sports medicine. I hated them both. Loved being in the operating room, so I knew I had to do a surgical specialty. General surgery rotation was very, ahem, abrasive where I went to school. I had ruled out the other specialties for one reason or another and was left with urology or gynecology. Urology was too competitive for me, so OB or GIN it was. I also had a very, very good friend for years ahead of me. So she was just about to finish residency when I started. She mentored me and actually took a position as an attending where I matched for residency. I absolutely love what I do. I have a truly amazing team right now between my scribe, my nurse, the Serg techs, and the LDR girls. It's a great job. Story 8. I male used to work as a prenatal chemist. This mostly meant screening amniotic fluid and blood serum from pregnant people to detect chemical signals which could indicate an issue with the pregnancy. The first few times, I was like, this stuff is from a uterus? That's so weird, but then it just became another bodily fluid. I took the job simply because it meant a raise, I could do the chemistry, and handle an immunosay. The real issue was getting the occasional male trainee who had the sort of cultural background which made him unable to discuss or learn about in entirely clinical context important things like gestational age calculation by last menstrual period versus ultrasound. Story 9 I'm a male MD working right now at a family practice here in Sweden, but considered OB or GIN seriously for a while and worked at a women's clinic for a short time. Medically, it's the perfect sweet spot for a person who wants to do it all. You get emergencies and save lives on a daily basis. You get really cool surgery ranging from real emergency life-threatening operations to long cancer operations. You are almost an endocrinologist, a geriatrician, a pediatrician, and a therapist all at once. You get to meet life and death literally all the time. I have seen and assisted a fair amount of deliveries and seen the joy and pain in the parents' eyes. I have held an older patient's hand while consulting them, telling them that the cancer is inoperable and that there isn't anything more we can do. It's just a wonderful specialty overall. Story 10. Gynecologist for 20 years. Great job that has always had lots of variety and evolved over time. Started with a focus on obstetrics, delivering babies, experiencing the adrenaline and privilege of being there for that big moment with people. Slowly evolved towards gyne and cancer, learning high-end surgery, using cool kit, dealing with highly challenging scenarios and constantly learning and developing. This coincided with moving away from the exhausting after-hours work. Love my job and if I was independently financially comfortable I would still do it for free. Story 11 as a male gynecologist, I understand that my chosen career path may seem unusual to some people. However, for me, it was a natural choice that was driven by a desire to help women with their reproductive health and to make a difference in their lives. I have always been fascinated by the complexity and beauty of the female reproductive system. 
The intricacy of the processes involved in conception, pregnancy, and childbirth is truly awe-inspiring, and I wanted to be a part of it. Moreover, I was drawn to the opportunity to help women manage their reproductive health and to provide them with the care and support they need to stay healthy and happy. When I first started my medical training, I was unsure about which specialty I wanted to pursue. However, during my rotations in obstetrics and gynecology, I found myself drawn to the field. I was fascinated by the wide range of conditions and treatments that gynecology encompasses, from routine checkups and preventative care to complex surgeries and treatment for gynecological cancers. What I find most rewarding about my work as a gynecologist is the opportunity to make a meaningful impact on my patients' lives. For many women, reproductive health issues can be a source of anxiety and discomfort, and it's incredibly fulfilling to be able to help them manage these issues and to see the positive impact it has on their lives. Of course, there are challenges that come with being a male gynecologist. Some women may feel uncomfortable with a male doctor examining them or discussing sensitive topics related to their reproductive health. However, I do my best to create a safe and comfortable environment for all of my patients, regardless of their gender or background, and to approach my work with compassion and sensitivity. In the end, I chose to pursue a career in gynecology because I believe that every woman deserves access to high-quality reproductive health care, and I wanted to be a part of the team that provides it. While it can be a demanding and challenging profession, it is also incredibly rewarding and fulfilling, and I am grateful for the opportunity to make a difference in the lives of my patients. Story 12. This question is so fascinating to me. I had surgery twice last year, and my obgin of more than 10 years referred me to her colleague, a male surgeon. I was hesitant for many reasons including surgery because that's terrifying. But she said that he's the best and he'd take good care of me. He was amazing. My first surgery was incomplete because I had too much bleeding and it was absolutely terrifying since everything bad that could have happened actually did happen. I obviously didn't know since I was asleep but he called me a few hours later to make sure I was okay. He called my boyfriend to make sure I was okay. He gave us his personal cell in case of an emergency. My second surgery went way better and my life is much easier because of this surgery. I'm so grateful to my male Obgin because he made my life infinitely better. Story 13. My first gynecologist was a gin oncologist. I had to go to him early in life due to family history. He got into the field because the deaths of his mom and grandma affected him deeply. They died of vaginal cancer. My mamma also had vaginal cancer at a very late stage. With his help she was able to beat it and lived another 15 years. He did a lot of pro bono work which the hospital board wasn't happy about. But since he was one of the best guys in the field, they really couldn't do anything about it. Story 14. Surgeon since graduating medical school in 2007. I didn't consider gynecology at all prior to mandatory educational clinical exposure. Turns out I was both good at and enjoyed the obstetric work and the operative aspects. Ultimately, I decided not to pursue exclusively gynecological training for several reasons that had nothing to do with pelvic exams. The medical legal liability environment was contentious even then for that specialty when I started my training. Also, the operative training experience in gynecological residency is typically severely lacking and would not have maximized the potential of my preparations, talents, and ability unless I did a gin oncology fellowship and I didn't specifically want to focus on cancer surgery from the outset. I still get to do a fair bit of gynecological surgery because general surgeons get called whenever gynecologists make mistakes, encounter complications, or find themselves out of their depth intraoperatively including difficult C-sections. General surgeons also operate on women and pregnant women frequently for non-gynecological issues or when there is a lack of clarity if the issue is gynecological or not. We are also the specialty that manages breast surgery specifically. It turns out that people are people, and no matter what your specialty you are doing some forms of women's health care and maintenance, so it's a good thing I enjoyed those aspects of gynecology, because I'm still doing them anyway. Story 15. I get to do a nice mixture of office, surgery, and labor and delivery, which is its own unique thing. I like the busyness and the high intensity. And I like being a part of one of the biggest days of people's lives. The hours could be better though. Babies have no respect for other people's schedule. Story 16. 
I think it's one of the most generalist areas of medicine still around, you dual specialize at least where I practice, so you get to do both obstetrics and gynecology. With gynecology you deal with both medical and surgical issues, things that may have been dismissed for ages by other doctors where you can make a difference, or things where people are truly worried they are not normal when they actually are. You deal with <coughs> health, cancer, chronic pain, fertility issues to name a few. A lot of treatments can be medically based, but surgery is occasionally used. Communication is key here, and teaching the patient about the condition is paramount to helping them deal with it. I enjoyed palliative medicine as a young doctor, and early pregnancy issues like miscarriage allow me to look after a family unit in a similar way, as do later losses from an obstetric point of view. Surgically, you can do open surgery, laparoscopic, vaginal, plastics, urogyny, and general, robotic etc. Your work can be elective or emergent, and ruptured ectopics or hemorrhaging miscarriages can be the most urgent of urgent, allowing you to save someone's life very quickly. With obstetrics you can deal with any medical issue with help from other specialties as your population of patients can have pretty much any medical disorders. You get to watch a patient move through their pregnancy, and can even support and deliver them if it is needed. The emergency component in obstetrics is broad and frequent and these are usually easy to deal with. However, the skill comes in communication in these fraught scenarios, which make or break a patient's experience. There's also a safeguarding component, as women are more likely to suffer from domestic abuse, especially in pregnancy, where you can make a massive difference to that patient's life. Overall, you deal with young, old, normal, abnormal, cancer, STIs, life, death, grief, happiness, fear, support, a vagina is only part of it, there's a uterus, ovaries, hormones, and a complete whole person that I treat.